Well, in response to soaring HIV rates in the late 1990s, uh, Portugal implemented a number of reforms uh, right around 2001. And uh, one of them was to decriminalize the possession of all drugs. So essentially, if, for all drugs, if you got caught with less than uh, 10 days worth, um, you were then, as opposed to being arrested, you would then have to go in front of uh, what was called a dissuasion commission, which was typically, you know, maybe a social worker, a health worker, um, um, maybe, uh, you know, maybe a lawyer. And essentially, you would go in front of this commission and talk to them about your substance use. And then based on that, they would decide whether or not just to kind of, you know, drop the charges, you know, give you a fine or maybe make a recommendation to treatment. And um, so that actually so that was that was one component to what Portugal did. At the same time, they also massively increased funding not only for treatment, but also for outreach and harm reduction services. And so one of the things that's been difficult has been trying to tease out, well, from what we're seeing in Portugal, how much of that can be attributable to them, you know, to the decriminalization versus just the increase in funding and treatment, and then also, you know, the increase in funding for harm reduction. And the other thing to keep in mind with Portugal is that even before they decriminalized, you know, there were very few people that were imprisoned uh, for drug possession. So, um, so, and in fact, some people say that kind of what they passed in 2001 was just an extension of something that they had passed in 1993. So, um, so there already wasn't much of a risk there. Um, but that said, it's been about 20 years and this gets a lot of attention. And uh, so, you know, so as I mentioned earlier, you had kind of soaring HIV rates, they implemented these reforms, you know, the rates went down. So the, the difficult thing from a research perspective is figuring out, okay, there was this large decline in, uh, in HIV, but how much of that can be attributable to the policy changes versus maybe just a regression to the mean, or was there just increased access to better treatment? So, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, we did see, you know, um, rates for uh, the utilization of substance use disorder treatment go up. So, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that some of that decline can be attributable to these 2000, you know, to, to the intervention or the, um, the efforts that were passed in 2001. But it's hard to say how much of that can be attributable to those policy changes versus other factors. Um, but look, this is, you know, this policy, you know, this approach has been in effect, you know, you know, for 20 years. And it gets a tremendous amount of attention uh, nationwide or uh, you know, worldwide. Um, but the thing to keep in mind is this was much more than decriminalization. People, keep, people often refer to it just as decriminalization, but I think it's better to think about this as decriminalization plus. 